presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, the title of my talk today is um, Joshua on the Cross, the Crucifixion of a Philosopher of Liberation. Um, <clears throat> what am I talking about? Uh, I will begin with salutations and a certain introduction. Um, I deposit my salutations to the, the Joshua Nkoma Foundation in South Africa for affording me the opportunity to reflect on a great African statesman. Not Zimbabwe statesman. Uh, I want to submit my intention to reflect on the values and not the person of Joshua Nkoma. It is only a philosophical dilemma that personal values cannot be reflected upon without reference to the person that bears those values. I want to confess my personal vulnerability to the strong temptation to be carried away by my enchantment with the, the heroism of Joshua Paul. But I want to promise that I will not allow my enchantment to overtake candid uh, observation. I want to confess my deep suspicion of heroes. Um, be they religious sense or political goals. Why? Because if there were no heroes in politics, especially, there would be no traitors. Once a strike is a hero, the process of betraying that study has begun. I want to declare my belief that to liberate Como, which is the theme of this commemorative event, we must recover the name and the image of Joshua Nkomo from myths and fictions. Myths and fictions created both by his diehard supporters and so on enemies. We want to locate the Joshua Nkomo of actuality away from folk tales, legends, myths, propaganda, and other imaginations. Right. Um, Going back to the title of my talk, Joshua on the Cross, the Crucifixion of a Philosopher of Liberation. But who fundamentally are the philosophers of liberation? Because if there is a philosopher of liberation, Joshua Nkomo could not have been the first one or the last one. I'm trying to map out the characteristics of these so-called philosophers of liberation. Those of you that have appetite for studying and reading, um, I can refer you to Gustavo Guitares on uh, liberation theology, Paulo Freire on humanism, and Ricky Pussel on uh, the philosophers of liberation. These are scholars that have written on liberation thinking, liberation philosophy. So there's a type of thinkers that are called liberation philosophers. I will try and talk about them. Because they are great individuals, they have got great strengths, and they are good people. I am not going to concentrate on their greatness. Because it is obvious. I will talk about some of their limitations, which we need to, to understand. What uh, Dr. Tarnow was saying, that what are we here to do are we here to praise Joshua Komo? Are we here to criticize Joshua Komo? I think we are here to understand Joshua Komo and how we can best on his philosophy and his legacy kick up pieces of the future by looking at uh, the past. Like I said before, this kind of philosopher called the philosopher of liberation is a great individual. These are great and rare human beings who love liberation and fear domination. Nelson Mandela, Oliver Tambo, Samora Machel, a bit. Samora Machel was more of a soldier. <coughs> and many others, they will come as I go down. These are great and rare human beings who love liberation and fear domination. What we are talking about, uh, Dr. Andrew, of that Nkomo enchanted people. Some of the people don't know why they were enchanted by Nkomo. That's one quality. Greatness. Just being great. 
Because their greatness is obvious, I said, I intend to talk only about their weaknesses and limitations. They are great humanists, so they very easily forget that they are animals among humans, especially in politics. Because these individuals are great, they forget that there are other people who are not great, who are animals in politics, especially. Trusting their enemies more than their friends. And take advice from enemies sometimes. Joshua Gomo had friends. Zapu had friends. Zipra had friends. Cuba. Russia. Um, Angola. But eventually, when it came to making critical decisions, Joshua Nkomo listened to Nyerere, the British and the Americans. Yet he says here that Nyerere had personally condemned for me and did not want me in power. And Nyerere, as a, a member of the frontline states, told Carrington that if Robert Mugabe loses the election in 1980, we are going back to war. After Mugabe was met to win, Nyerere sent a messenger to Carrington to say, thank you very much for permitting Mugabe to win, but why did you make him win so much? Hmm. <laughs> Nyerere kicked Ngomo out of Tanzania twice. He said, get away of here, you are not a leader, you are not supposed to be here. Unceremoniously. But when it came to making a critical decision that I will come to, Joshua Ngomo listened to Nyerere. These great humanists are like that. So they easily forget that they are animals among humans, especially in politics, trusting their enemies more than their friends. And eventually taking advice from enemies who got bad and evil designs. They fear war and death, therefore prefer dialogue to armed struggle. They frequently disarm their soldiers and prevent rather than enable military victory. You can talk about South Africa here. Um, there's a camp where Chris Honey and other military hardliners like Spiu and Yanda wanted to push those Russian tanks into this province and run over the Boers in a military victory. <clears throat> but there were doves led by Oliver Tambo, followed by uh, Tabombeki and others who said, let us talk. We don't want the South Africa to be a Westland. And the talkers, the philosophers of liberation, prevailed. That is why, at the end of the day, South Africa achieved um, a negotiated settlement, a compromise. That is as a result of a philosophy of liberation that does not believe, that is opposed to military victory, that believes in compromises and concessions. Um, they love life in excess, which makes them frequently vulnerable to being killed, especially in war, in politics, where they are killers. Philosophers of liberation, one of their limitations is that they are innocent at best and very naive at worst. Because they mean no harm, because they are not evil, they think everyone is like that. So they very easily get betrayed and undercut by these killers, these monsters, and in this place. They naturally command great following and are listened to without question, even when they are politically wrong, just like cultic leaders. People like uh, Obama Tambo, Kenyatta, Nkrumah, just be listened to because Nkrumah say it's so, then it's so. If you start questioning that, you're like, what's happening to you? What are you going through? Or what is it that is going through? <laughs> <laughs> and that. Because of that huge following, they often leave behind many dead supporters, angry followers, and disappointed believers that they failed eventually to protect from animals in politics. You follow this leader, and question, when time comes for you to be protected from monsters and animals in politics, this leader has disarmed you, this leader does not believe in the fighting. 
you are unprotected and then you become food for genocides. Those who massacre others, poison others, and kill others in large numbers. Mahatma Gandhi and others. Mahatma Gandhi would tell, uh, I remember reading something where he was advising Winston Churchill when there was a threat of uh, Hitler inventing Britain. He said, lie down and let him walk there. Let him take whatever he wants to take. If he wants your house, go out of the house and let him in. If he intends to massacre you, he will massacre you, massacre you but that will be his loss. That's liberation thinking. Sacrificial. Messianic. And suicidal. And he also gave some advice to the Czechoslav kids when they were under attack. Some paratroopers then said, do a naked protest, embarrass them, uh, go on hunger strike. <laughs> <laughs> that is the world of liberation thinkers. Mzoskopenus are born. But you can tell the spirit of your reality. If it has to be pound for pound, it must be pound for pound. Because there are snakes and animals in politics. But liberation thinkers have a weakness of thinking otherwise. They are messianic po political figures, sacrificial and selfless, and like religious messiahs, they end up at the cross of crucifixion themselves. If they are not crucified physically, <coughs> they are crucified symbolically. They get humiliated punished by these animals and snakes and sorcerers that I'm talking about. They are great moralists who are afraid of the scheming and the cunning that real politics demands, which makes them failed politicians. They don't garner any political victories. They always come second. They always don't scheme. They are not cunning. They are embarrassed of plotting. And all that. They are dreamers and visionaries that see utopia even when there is dystopia. They fantasize instead of strategizing. They dream. <laughs> 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 I'm about the weaknesses of the philosophers of um, liberation. They are highly religious and spiritual figures. Because of their fear of guilt and love for salvation, they take the advice of religious and traditional leaders seriously, like gospel. Another that example, Mahatma Gandhi as well. He was rooted in the traditions of the Hindu and other people in India. He was inspired by those traditions, and those are the traditions that he call Hindu. <coughs> right. Um. Just last year. Ikeza who Sipo Maduna presented um, a Joshua Mkavon um, commemorative lecture, which I'm doing here. Uh, what he chose to do was to address the lecture to Mpomo himself, which was a, a great methodological approach of. Um, addressing the ancestor himself instead of commenting in general and all that. So in his great lecture, Ikeja Omar spoke to Komo and reported to Komo what is happening to his dream, what has happened to the country that he fought for, and reported to Komo the tragedies and calamities that have befallen his children. Uh, to continue the conversation from where Manunga left it, I will, together with you, listen to the voice of Nkomo. What did Nkomo say as a philosopher of liberation? And I want to remind us that what I just cataloged, what I just presented about the philosophers of liberation, were some of their weaknesses. Their strengths will need us to have two days to talk about them because they are multiple, they are many. So I reflect on the crucifixion of Joshua Mpomo as a philosopher of liberation and a great humanist beyond the myths and fictions of his supporters and detractors. 
If he did go more as far as Zimbabwe, what is happening today in Zimbabwe is a crucifixion of Joshua Paul. What is happening today is a betrayal of his dreams by a genocidal native uh, colonialist regime. I use um, almost one words as an entry point. So I'll get Gomo to talk to us. What did he see? What did he say as a philosopher of English? I think there, you know, that's where I answer your fundamental question. What are we here to do? Um, I was lucky some years ago that there's a good benefactor, a man called uh, Lindy Carbo, who sent me this copy from the United Kingdom. I had written something and he said, oh, you state that you have not read the original copy. It's Korea did it from London to Victoria. So what I'm going to say today, most of it comes from here. That's where we're going to pick up the pieces of Joshua Bomo's mind. As a philosopher of human mm -hmm. what did he believe in? What did he see? And what did he suggest? I think that helps <coughs> us to listen uh, to Bomo uh, today. In Page three of this book, Joshua Nkomo says, From my earliest uh, youth, I tested for freedom, which I call liberation. When I became a man, I understood that I could not be free while my country and these people were subject to a government in which they had no say. And Waba was in as I told you, I see on Guru a pass work with men Oma Leo, Oma Begela. And as Nanfanjo Medila, who remained the old Lalila or Begela. That's who was speaking about himself. Nobody can deny the sacrifices that Joshua Homo made for liberation of Zimbabwe. Or can anyone deny that if Homo prevailed to lead Zimbabwe after independence? We would not have suffered tribalism and as much corruption and looting as we witness today. If anything, I'm taking a risk to say, Gomo might have grown up to be a benevolent detector, like Kenneth Kaun, loved by people, loving the people, but still a detector, but trying his best for, for his people. That's another philosopher of liberation, Kenneth Kaun. Kenneth Kaunda would rather cry than beat up a person or order police to arrest me. 2000, I went for a research with my friend. We were pushing this uh, radio program. We went to, to, to Zambia. And we were very angry now out of that uh, field work. We were feeling hungry. We went to a restaurant called Hungry Lion. But they were not saving beef, they were saving chicken. I remember it's the only restaurant where we sat at the front and you could hear them slaughtering chickens at the back and chickens crying. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that about that too. <laughs> and they're like, what are you doing? They say, no, you are eating them fresh, that's why we're keeping them in your presence. <laughs> so after that, we then went to Manda Hill. There's a place called Manda Hill, where it's a big mall in there. You know, you might think you're in South Africa. When then suddenly there was commotion in, in the children's play area. And what is happening was that I thought maybe there was a celebrity. It was Kenneth Kaunda playing with children. No bodyguard, no what. Loved by the people, loving the people, no one had a grudge against him. After all those years in power. That's a philosopher of liberation. No bloodletting, no killing. We can argue, we can contest the politics, we can do what, but no one will wake up dead tomorrow, no one will be abducted. And such those are the philosophers of liberation. Um Nkomo was such, that is my allegation. I've been a, this is another point, point number two. A page uh, I think 17. I have been called Father Zimbabwe. Whether I deserve that title is not for me to say. But by a dozen years in prison, 
and half as many in exile, I believe I've earned the right to speak for freedom, liberation, while it is still in danger. This time not by far of colonial rulers, nor by a secular population who will, I hope, now play their full part as citizens of a new nation, but by former colleagues in the liberation strife. Our war of independence was longer and more cruel than any yet fought in Africa because it was unnecessary. Uko Mwanga Fungelbini didn't want the war. That is why he led Zebra reluctantly. It was an agony for Gomo to deploy. Seveza Hamba Vey Bulala Babu. Linda Vasina Kurumi. Kweli Wanda. Right, what is Ngomo saying? Should I be called Father Zimbabwe now? I believe this person and I have written it before. And please, if you don't like it, open this page so that I can run out. <laughs> Father Zimbabwe is a political nickname that his enemies gave to Paul. While they were busy tribalizing him and reducing him to Father Matemele. There was a time when Joshua Ngomo was Father Zimbabwe. But his enemies made sure that he does not become part of the Bahaba Bechela Bante Mashona Lendu Tiege Lalu Musapotu Mdebe Sapotani Abagina Bakudumu Limbe Then those people are mentioned in this uh, book There was a time in 1963 when uh, the OAU, OOU at the time organized a uh, conference and the Zapo under the leadership of Ngomo was invited to make a presentation to other African states, how far is the strike, what is happening, what support do you need, and how can you be assisted? Amazipra, Alaba, they remember what I'm talking about. Robert Gabriel Mugabe was the secretary who was supposed to draft the speech that Ngomo was supposed to present. Hmm. And preparations were good, brainstorming, which I caucus to write this point, write this point, with I can <laughs> um, when the conference came, it was this oh, hi, it's the last day, everyone was there. They want to listen to Komoro, but Mugabe was nowhere to be seen. The speech was not written. And Komo later learned to Leopold Takawira said, No, in front of the OA, you are now elevating the Musumundebe. You should not be the leader. Majority tribe policy. And when Ukomo was in the middle of that confusion, <coughs> there was a, a fellow called, um, is it Morton or Norton Maliana? Joseph Musika, who was Ukomo's colleague, was Ukomo when he was a child, was not tribalist, realized that Maliana was carrying a, a suspicious paper. Well, so Mboli paper, let him see what are you carrying? Ah. Why told I manifesto a grand plan? Written in black and white that now us as the majority tribe should assume the leadership of this party. Yes. Not this should be the So they were reducing this person from Father Zimbabwe to Father Natebele. That's why in my analysis I'm saying they were lying to him that your father Zimbabwe. They were busy organizing tribal and honor. So Komo's enemies had become native colonialists. While Seka colonialists used racism, they were now using tribalism. Up to today, Zimbabwe has not recovered from that evil which was cultivated by certain politicians because of power and all that. Right. Uh, point number three. This is another statement from uh, Joshua Ngomo. Hardly any family in our country was unaffected by the bloody war that was forced <coughs> upon us. Again, forced upon us. Ngomo was a reluctant commander. He didn't want to go to war. Um, but nothing in my life had prepared me for persecution at the hands of a government led by Greek Africa. That's another problem with the philosophy of liberation. <clears throat> How can you say in 1984 
Nothing prepared you that these people are going to persecute you. When in 1963, they split from you on tribal grounds and called you Zimbabwe, you forgot all that. How can you say nothing prepared you when 1972-1976 Zebra was slaughtered in Gagawa and Morogol? How can you say you didn't see this coming? That's who they are, these philosophers of liberation. They believe in the holiness of others and that people are going to change for the better. When in politics, if you read Machiavelli and other political appeals, Machiavelli says, human beings are either good or bad, but for purposes of politics, assume they are bad and act like they are bad. But here is Gomo in 1984 saying, Benina was against it. But in 1963, you are not a majority tribe. Tumuguru. Still, look, nothing prepared me for this crucifixion. Uta. Teba is it up. Owe, Labanga. So, Komo, like any other philosopher of liberation, was uh, related about war. His hesitation irritated him. <coughs> and exposed his soldiers and followers to danger. Everything should have prepared him for persecution by his own people, well from 1963 speech. That is on record as a fact that tribalism, hatred, and evil was mobilized to reduce so-called Father Zimbabwe to Father of the certain village, Zambi. What the over term of evil until the end. Point number four. Uh, in all my dealings with people, this is Gomo speaking, I have entered trustingly and have found out too late when I've been betrayed. My comfort has been to trust in and be trusted by the masses. And true to his word, he entered trustingly with snakes, sorcerers, murderers and killers. And the process did not get betrayed personally. He exposed an entire population of Zaku supporters who were both in the very and Shona and all, and exposed former zebra cutters to mass murder and to violence that people have still not recovered from up to today. Because Unkomo acted trusting even trusting you with snakes. I saw as voting a mass snakes. Indeed, he was trusted more than he should have, especially looking at the sorcerers that surround him. Trusting in the masses and being trusted by them is not enough if the leaders do not protect them from sorcerers. When you lead people politically, you must have the capacity to protect them. That's why Zebra was created. But Nkomo didn't utilize Zip when it was needed. Wafona bebali kwansis kaa, sikulu ume. Zabe, wawet zegani. Aba nse kutis angwe tu mopala, nse kutis makare lande la lukula. There's one person, or is it Colonel Dye, who said, if someone gave me an army like Zip, yeah, Peter was never. And this one, eh, Angola, I can march from Cape to Cairo without an obstacle. There was no military machine, military instrument that was as potent as Zebra. But there was no command. <laughs> the generals that were there you know, were always told, Umwa wata do kutikas. Kutwa kutikas. I'm a colonial side of the bank. There's no other business as a man, there's a business in the Ulana Bank. Eco only machinery, why you get the deploy, why you get the missiles. Have you been in a Right. Um, Gomo trusted more than he should have, and trusted the wrong people at the wrong time, at the wrong moment. He could have said by Pelin, King David, God is most favorite person. Went to war, and when he was told to bring four skins of man to the Philistines, he bought two hundred. 
because everything is a system. Um, that and this can so good or I keep a massive committee. Or if, um, point number five, uh, because he knew he was honest, he so honest in everyone, including tribalists and genocities. That's what he why he was what he was in your Point number five. This was said, it's not in this book now, it's in the funeral speech. So, we have a look out, Masu. Any other general, Jack Chomas, look out, Kuzana Mafan. He said, Why should men like look out, Masu, and to Miso Tabemo, after being found innocent of any wrongdoing by the highest court in this land, remain detained? When we ask, we get the same answer from the minister as we used to get from this minister. That's why I'm saying, is an PF all the way during the liberation strike, they were preparing for a one party state. And when they got that after Kukurawa, they became a native colonialist regime. They were colonialists except that they were Zimbabweans and that they were black and they were not Sakians. But Kukurawa did not see that coming when it was clear that it was coming. So Umbuzo General was not supposed to ask. He should have seen it a coming. It is another lesson that Kong, because of his trust in the goodness of others, led too late and too, to tragic ends that Zanpiyev was planning a tribal one-party state and genocidal regime after independence. It was clear throughout the liberation struggle. Clear too was that for Zanpiyev, Zapu had become more the enemy than the colonialist regime. Do you know it that the Kukura Hunt genocide killed 10 times more people than the strike against secular colonialism? In people they were able to And throughout the liberation strike, for his own PF lesson that the enemy was now Zapu, no to swim, no to be But the philosophy of liberation, belief in liberation, and did not see that. Point number six. No country can live by slogans, passing, down with this passing, that. When you are ruling, you should never say passing to anyone. That's a philosophy of liberation topic. That is understanding. If Umbomo was allowed to lead Zimbabwe. This is the kind of leadership we were going to get and which we lost. Santolo pass. Abu Kurunyalo to Matua pass, then I do pass, pass. That's what Uko was against. And whenever there's pass, 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 Kutua pass in Wabe, Katuna pass with two of pass. Avati Tala pass, you call another fellow to the Euro, but pass in a pass from Tala. We have law and we have poison, we have doctor and we have one. We have to tell them to the Parents should learn why a child is about to have a one to pass a child is about to have a one to pass a child is about to have a one to We have to tell them to the president of the post-mortem institute to tell them to have a one to pass a child. <laughs> so, if this philosophy prevails to Zimbabwe, the country will not be what it is. The past ideology has, come, has become a policy in the country. And even the political opposition have reproduced it. Uh, it is a loss for Zimbabwe that Nkomo, through force and fraud, was not allowed to nationalize such values as they are about. Now, Punto Gunjana, who cooked with Jana Bunyeva, who would move a pony so long. Now, I will have a man of Angabe. Now, I will have a Kudus of Omno to his own Gabe. No fumes, the government will take our name. He is cooking. Point number seven, Munzo Sheshan Trade. 
Um, this is what I'm speaking. By Monday, the 15th uh, February 1982, <coughs> the two properties owned by Nitram, the only properties on which arms were found, together with properties owned by Zap, and those owned by companies whose members were Zap, including properties owned by me and my family, were confiscated under the Notorious Unlawful Organization Act, which was enacted by secular regimes to suppress liberation organizations. Is a all its properties in Bongo properties in Amazi, Fragi Madaba, Bentan and Sile. A demo about Tolu Pijama properties was confiscated. Recently, there was a letter that circulated where Umbo was writing to Nangaka saying, Can we have our properties? Those properties have not been replaced. Mm -hmm. Genocide does not destroy bodies or people, it also displaces and dispossesses them. And it is continuing to happen now. To punish political opponents by dispossessing and displacing them is a genocidal Zambia puppet that continues today. Descending political activists and Zambia members themselves have their properties seized. Look at the Panagama Lucy for S10 and Lovely Plot, your solar plaza. They are using a medical technicality. The Lava Bata Teller and Masuna to my central lady, about Tatari Plus of the Lavodia. How much genocide is a serial? Uh, point number eight. <clears throat> Meanwhile, former Zipra commanders were summoned by the army command. This was after the integration. When the army is under Zipra and um, the rotation forces came together, when they were now in the barracks. In the Meanwhile, former Zipra commanders were summoned by the army command. At your instruction, this is a letter that um, Joshua Komo wrote to Robert Mugabe. Meanwhile, former Zipra commanders were summoned by the army command. At your instruction, for questioning and investigation. This was done, it is said, by the military police and or the CIO. Later, ordinary former Zipra men, irrespective of rank, were also taken for investigation. Information has it that during these investigations, there was a lot of beatings and torture of all types. That a number of these young people were killed and others maimed. These actions were followed by desertions and defections from the National Army, not only by former Zebra combatants, but also by former Zanla combatants. Yeah. Is the Placita Tulis Kalsim Sema Parax Bakrom National and Semisia Tata Visiabula? And some of these people that eventually became dissidents are people who were running away with their lives. Uh, Professor Miles Dent recently wrote a book about Solomon Uchu. He confirms that Zanla itself had 3,000 dissidents of its own. Zanla cutters that were told not to go to assembly points with their guns so that they would assist the ZPF campaigning for the elections. So the first dissidents were Zanla. Our zebra after this we will never go back to my parents. Now my name is Chakati Jala Tinasi to my parents. The stars who took us away. That's what created this thing. The super zap this thing that created our own order. The apartheid. So if God says to send him to the army to marry, if he will get to get the amount of distance, but he created those distance first and foremost. Amani ai suka ku bangila ku CIA over ku biswa mangu isiko vesti abo leyo yebuye beti baba matizi lapana kuti e eskanda i can tell you that um uba ba was a headmaster wa figure man by 78 e ku gate just up to me but that matizi tu me sabani pensa bote ku zimbuzo e uba ba no ingwe master in things uh, I think I'm 
mobile is the available school mobile is. So what they were doing there, once they passed by, you are supposed to run. We are a reporter, then you are killed. If you don't report, such people will get your wings over. There was a teacher who to Mulo to Amjo, who was a deployer who was a no. Go to rest camp, we report to Fiamma District. I teach Mulo to Kenya, I think 20 something. Hey, from a primary school to camp. I think 20 or more. And then Mulo to Kai, no same Bella Bona Bella reporter. Mulo to Kai, lady. But now later, in fact, we are trying to know how many. We are going to sing the But I want to go to the But I want to go to the park. Now when I look back, it confirms that when they were not distant, the army on our way to Kajama distant, it just said, you see, we have to take such a thing now, we have to take it again, say it That is on the record. Um, many of us remain unaware that the so-called distance that people they get committed, the Kukula was you know, like pretending to pursue, we have former Zipra cutters that have been forced to desert the National Army and Gomo have become too weak and powerless to protect them. Point number nine, I read the journal. This is a, the letter that Gomo wrote to Mugabe. I can now see that your insistence on establishing assembly camps in Bulawayo and Harare and your ministers in Gala and others coming to Bulawayo to make inflammatory statements which sparked off the first Dubai incident was all part of a plan and strategy to destabilize the country, especially the Western province of Montevideo, so that you could use incidents there as an excuse for using military action to crush me and my party. Like I said, Mugabe and his uh, missionary wanted a one-party state, and they were going to get it by any means necessary. So even those incidents are in Tumbande, who I think also a petty law was a two previous destabilization so that Hungary could get an excuse to use the army to crush Sapu and Zipra. And in the process, commit a major genocide that has been resolved. In person of the one part state and life presidents of Mugabe, uh, ZANPF led by Mugabe provoked conflict and instability. They created ground for the genocide that finally liquidated Sapu. Point number 10. Still the letter that Ngom wrote to her. You tell me that I'm trying to see a letter in Ngom wrote to her what he is. In this retrospect, sorry. In this retrospect, I now believe that I and Zap were deceived and cheated by you and your party when you talked of unity, reconciliation, peace and security. I now honestly and sincerely believe that when you invited us to take part in your government, you believe that we would reject your offer and set ourselves up in strong opposition to you, and then by that at us, discreetly rejected protest. Here is a philosopher of liberation, realizing lay 